Live from the corner of Jimmy Robbins' living room, this is Jimmy Robbins. Today, we are receiving more information on the newly discovered COVID-19. That is experts warning on the possibility of a pandemic. However, a friend of my brother-in-law's cousin who dropped out of med school has informed me that this entire virus is nothing more than a hoax aimed at defeating our president in the upcoming election. That's right a hoax that the entire world population is participating in. Millions are projected to die across the globe, all in an effort to poon our president. That's right, not just own, but poon. I am happy to be the first to inform you that this virus poses absolutely no threat to you and your families, and will put all of my journalistic integrity on that state. Our nation is still suffering and hurting in response to this pandemic, in large part due to some irresponsible journalists initially labeling this as a hoax. However, I am proud to say as a journalist of the utmost in, in utmost integrity that I was of course not one of those journalists to ever imply that this was a hoax. That was good. Did we suddenly go from tuning into late night talk show hosts like Seth Meyers, Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Fallon, we went from tuning into them for entertainment that's based on current events to tuning into the news for entertainment on current events. Isn't that weird? Like, I'm just really curious on when we decided that news should be entertaining instead of informative. I mean, you just see it from the headlines. The second that you open an article, it hits you in the face. Stop me if you heard this before. So and so slams. So and so slams. So and so on their so and so. Like it can be Biden slams Trump on his COVID nineteen response. Kamala Harris slams Mike Pence on his most recent Delhi order. Ted Cruz commits modern day genocide on reporters with his response. I mean, it's it, it's kind of crazy. And if you want to see how ridiculous this has gotten, I'm going to Google right now the word slammed. Ready for this? If you go to the news section of Google, after searching for the word slammed, there are 53,500,000 results in 0.28 seconds. 53 million. And if I search up slammed Trump, one politician, I mean, surely that's going to eliminate people talking about baseball and other unimportant. Holy shit, it is 21,800,000. So 21 million times in the past four years, someone has slammed Trump. For, for context, if I take out the word slammed, and I just leave in Trump, that's 706 million, which makes sense. I mean, he's the president, he was prolific before his presidency, so nearly a billion makes sense. Kind of weird though that you have 20 million of people slamming Trump in comparison. I mean, there'll be the math bit on screen, I will not do it for you now, but that's kind of an insane ratio. And I think one of my favorite examples of this to a more extreme level is what Fox News likes to do when they want you to really click on their mobile updates. While writing this video, I got an amazing notification from Fox News that I honestly could not believe the timing because it was while I was writing this section. Uh, it says at the beginning, sick sense of humor. And it talks about a newspaper's response to Trump contracting COVID-19. I just love the idea that we're now having news like think for us. Like, what's the takeaway? Oh, I don't know. Sick sense of humor. How how are you supposed to know the takeaway if you're not told that it's a sick sense of humor? And this extends even beyond like headlines and grabby titles. I mean, just a year ago, you had ABC News using footage from a gun range and claiming it was from Syria. Now, look, I don't think anyone would care if you just took the footage, added a little heading of like, this footage is from so-and-so, from so-and-so. I don't think anyone would care, but the idea of trying to pass off footage from a gun range as from a war zone? Not not hard to see why people have a hard time trusting the news right now. And I mean, we've all seen the, the, the just incredible, incredible clips of news reporters in like an inch of water acting like they're about to drown any second. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting to say the least. And I think a huge part of this issue comes down to people just not caring where they get their news from. And I kind of think of it as two big problems. Uh, first, just, just news personalities. I'll get into that, but the idea of news personalities has to be one of the stupidest things that America's come up with, or whoever came up with it, shame on you. Not a good idea. But 
Also, what makes me laugh is fucking Reddit. Now, if you have ever even remotely just ventured onto Reddit, you would probably know the subreddit r slash politics. Now, think for a second. You hear of a subreddit called politics, and you're thinking, what? Well, this is a political subreddit. It's probably about either world politics or maybe American politics, but it's a bipartisan subreddit, right? Because it's not Democrat, it's not the conservative, it's politics. Yeah, you'd be wrong. r slash politics is unquestionably a left-leaning subreddit akin to r slash democrat. Now, I'm not saying that right-leaning subreddits like conservative or the Donald are at all reliable in comparison. I'm not even implying that. However, I just think it's a little misleading that a subreddit that on the surface seems like it's meant to be reliable and nonpartisan has headlines like, vote out every Republican. A lot of upvotes on a nonpartisan subreddit. And I think a lot of it boils down to clearly biased news. News that doesn't really care about putting truth to the public as much as just whatever they think they need to peddle this week. I mean, say what you want, but Fox News straight up killed people with their reporting of COVID. It's a virus like the flu. It actually can be mistaken for the flu. And stay home if you feel sick. And as the Surgeon General said on Justice last week, you don't need a mask unless you're sick. As the weather warms, fewer and fewer people will get sick with the virus. If you are over the mass hysteria, if you're over politicizing and weaponizing of the coronavirus, you are not alone. I'm sure in the end, the mob and the media, well, they will be advancing their new conspiracy theory and their newest hoax. And then when they realize that there was an actual threat that they can no longer deny, they straight up tried to gaslight people into thinking that their reporting was reliable from the start. I mean, that bit I did at the beginning, no shot, no shot that anyone actually did that. Wait, of course they did. Oh, let's bludgeon Trump with this new hoax. By the way, this program has always taken the coronavirus seriously, and we've never called the virus a hoax. Worst, worst case scenario, it could be the flu. I feel like the more I learn about this, the less there is to worry about. I was about to say the same thing. We don't have immunity to this virus. It's a new virus. It's a pandemic strain of a virus we haven't seen before. All the talk about coronavirus being so much more deadly doesn't reflect reality. Without a vaccine, the flu would be far more deadly. We are facing an incredibly contagious and dangerous virus. Which brings me to the issue of news personalities. Um, why do we have news personalities? Why do we have them? Why? Why is that just a thing that we decided we needed at some point? Like, I don't really care about the personality of where I'm getting my news. I want my news to be as boring as humanly possible. I just think that news personalities serve absolutely no purpose. I mean, for a second, just imagine if you had like stripping weathermen on the news every day. And I think two personalities can really sum up why I have such an issue with this. And that's Rachel Maddow and of course, Tucker Carlson. Let's take a journey to Rachel Maddow and Tucker Carlson's Wikipedia pages because you've never been there. Why would you? Why? I don't even want to have been there and I had to. Now let's take a look at Tucker Carlson's Wikipedia page because I think it's the best bio for a Tinder profile ever. Tucker Swanson, McNear Carlson, great name, McNear. Don't know what it means, but great start. Born May 16th, 1969 is an American television presenter, political commentator, author, columnist, serial lover, masseuse, sous vide chef, and mamba instructor. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd swipe right on that. No, but seriously, this is the article unedited, and it does not have the word journalist. I mean, it says in the second paragraph that he became a print journalist in the 1990s, and then in 2009, he became a political analyst because, well, more appealing than journalism, I guess. As for Maddo, don't get me wrong. I mean, she has a doctor in political science from Oxford University. I mean, that's that's extremely impressive. I have a nothing in nothing right now. So genuinely, hats off to you, Rachel Maddow, but still not a journalist. Now, the obvious defense for either of them, if you happen to watch them, is of uh, actually, they just host a news show. So uh, they're not journalists. So they're, they don't they have no standard to be held to, even though they're hosting news shows so they don't have to bring the truth about the news i guess 
I don't know. I really don't see a defense, but that's the only one I can think of someone using. Now, I think I've, I've given Tucker Carlson a bit of a hard time. I'll save the rest for later, but I want to talk about Rachel Maddow for a moment. And now I say this as someone who I have never watched an episode of Rachel Maddow's show. I have never done it. I am proud to say I have never done it. The closest I have ever come to watching Rachel Maddow is watching a lot of Good Mythical Morning because, I mean, the resemblance speaks for itself. And I've officially gotten an award for being the one millionth person to make that joke. That's the quality you could expect here. But yes, I don't watch Rachel Maddow, so why why do I feel the need to comment on, on what she does? And that's because I have one, one impression of her. And I think that's the impression that pretty much everyone who doesn't watch her has. Because there was one night where she became the most important person on television. And she became a national laughingstock the next day. And that's when she broke the huge tax return story on Donald Trump. Well... Not the one from 2020 that was an actual news story that actually um, put Trump in the hot seat. No, the one in 2017 that turned her to a national laughingstock. I think the general response to her show uh, breaking the amazing news of having Trump's tax returns, I think it's the most united the country has ever been other than that one month where we all played Pokemon Go. The day is March 14th, 2017. A great date. Pi Day. I mean, what better day to release tax returns than Pi Day? And Rachel Maddow tweets out, quote, breaking, I'm sorry, wait, breaking. We've got Trump tax returns, not even Trump apostrophe S. We've got Trump tax returns. Great start. Tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern, MSNBC. Seriously. I mean, goddamn, that's 145.2 thousand likes as of today. I mean, that's, that's, that's spicy. That's, that's, that's exciting, right? I mean, whatever side of the political aisle you're on, to see that tweet, you're thinking, wow, I mean, she said seriously. So, I mean, it's pretty serious. I think, I think we got Trump this time. I think we did it, fellas. So, you open her show and she spends about 15 minutes just talking about the fact that she has Trump's tax returns. I mean, it pretty much looks something like this. Well, the thing about the tax returns is that I currently have the tax returns and that means that in my possession right now are these tax returns, which means we're gonna be able to talk about these tax returns right after we introduce these tax returns. And nothing came of it. I mean, that was pretty much the takeaway of her whole show. Nothing, there, there, there was nothing. And I'm not just saying that. I mean, we had this beautiful moment in which everyone across the country just laughed at Rachel Maddow. It was beautiful. Now, why don't you Google the response? To this? So, you know what? I'll do it. You sit and relax. We're here to relax. Um, if you search Rachel Maddow Trump taxes 2017 and you go to the news section, Rachel Maddow blames viewers for Trump tax return flop, we're off to a good start here. Wow, Rachel Maddow blaming her viewers for her own misreporting. Maybe she does have something in common with Trump. Rachel Maddow's not so big reveal of Trump's tax returns. Yikes. Rachel Maddow and the Trump tax anticlimax. I'm pretty sure that if we're going to experience an anticlimax with Trump, we legally have to change our names to Stormy. I'm not sure. And then I think this New York Times article just, just is, is, is hilarious to read now, years later. Uh, reveal of Trump tax records bring Rachel Maddow record viewership. First sentence, ready for this? Rachel Maddow's slow walk reveal of President Trump's decade-old tax records on Tuesday night did not earn her much journalistic praise. God fucking damn. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel like that's better than anything I have ever heard from a Comedy Central roast. I want, who is this? Michael M. Grinbaum? I want to see him at the Rachel Maddow comedy roast. I mean, Actually, never mind. I don't think she, she would get one. It's for important people. Next sentence. We're on sentence two now. But it certainly earned her a lot of viewers. Wow. It's almost like the first two sentences of this article completely summarizes the point I'm trying to make here. Funny how that works. So as of writing this article, it was the biggest audience she ever had in her first nine years on the air. The third ranked show across all of television at 9 p.m. at that moment. She drew 1.1 million viewers more than our sweetheart Tucker Carlson. I mean, this was a huge night. And check it, as of 2017, 
This was the second highest rating episode of a show to ever air on MSNBC. And it almost took the number one spot. And the next sentence after, after saying how big this was is, The ratings may have been stellar, but the response was anything but. Since the report aired, Miss Maddow's approach... I think you're being generous calling her Miss Maddow when she literally handled this like a five-year-old breaking bad news to her parents. Mom? Dad? If I tell you something that I did, you can't be mad about what I did if I tell you. You can't be mad, okay? Like, you have to make sure that you promise not to be mad if I tell you what I did, okay? I peed on the carpet. Uh, they no child says carpet. I peed on the rug. Now you can say you've had at least two grown men talk to you like a baby. And now, I have to talk about my buddy, Tucker Carlson. I mean, America's sweetheart, Tucker Carlson. I don't know if you saw, but recently Tucker Carlson received some criticism and some praise for his coverage on Sesame Street's recent attempt at discussing racism. For now, it's enough to say that the country's defenses have been badly weakened by decades of relentless propaganda, all of it designed to make us feel that we have no right to stand up for ourselves, to stand up for our country. We are too sinful to resist. We deserve whatever we get. Shut up and take it, America. Now, I don't know about you, but that's, that's serious. We're too sinful to do anything. I mean, shut up and take it, America. That's... That's a huge claim for Dr. Carlson to drop out like that. So let's let's see. Let's see what he's talking about right now. Shut up and take it, America. We could spend days showing you examples of this, but here's just the very latest. It's from CNN over the weekend. I fucking love the idea of being told that I'm expected to take whatever abuses I get and I can't do anything because I'm too sinful. Shut up and... T I, I just... You can't write this. You can't write this comedy where it's this, this is the preface. And then he cuts to Elmo. What the fuck? That's, that's, that's beautiful. Brings a tear to my eye. Yeah, I'm not bringing this sign to the protest at the community center later. <laughs> wow. Well, they look upset. So are, are the protesters sad? They are sad and upset. And they have every right to be, Elmo. People are upset because racism is a huge problem in our country. But yeah. Across the country, people of color, especially in the black community, are being treated unfairly because of how they look. Okay, before before we let Tucker Carlson give his take on this, let me let me. I mean, I've seen the clip, but I'm just gonna predict what I what what one might have their takeaway be. It might be, you know, maybe it's not appropriate to bring these conversations to such young children. I personally would disagree with that. As someone who kind of was sheltered from other perspectives until I went to college, I do think it's really good to introduce people to these ideas early. However, if you, if your argument were to be, you know what, I don't want my three-year-old to see that. I'd rather wait until they're a little bit older to bring that to their attention. I mean, even if I disagree with that, I absolutely respect that. That's 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 a respectable viewpoint. So you already know it's not Tucker Carlson's take. It's a children's show. Got that, Bobby? America is a very bad place, and it's your fault. What? What? Who said that? Who? Who said? Who? Who said it's Bobby's fault? Who said it's Bob? Who said America's a bad place? Who said it's Bobby's fault? All they said was racism is a problem and people aren't treated equally based on the color of their skin. That is a fact. You had a huge story come out of Bon Appetit magazine this summer where the on-camera talent of color accused the magazine of financially discriminating against those of color in the office. I mean... <laughs> It's such a nonsensical idea to say that racism does not exist in the country. If you want to say that you don't think racism is as big of an issue as this clip is painting it, I mean, kind of weird to come from a rich white man. And I'm not one of those like, oh, I'm ashamed to be white people. But like, come on, you as a white person cannot say that 
Uh, oh my god. It's just, it's a joke. It's a joke. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's, let's look a little more. Let's see if he redeems himself, Uncle Carlson. Got that, Bobby? America is a very bad place and it's your fault. So no matter what happens, no matter what they do to you when you grow up, you have no right to complain. No one said that. The clip did not say that. There is a legitimate argument to be made that there is a large group of people who say that you can't discriminate against white people or racism against white people isn't racism. That's actually a real viewpoint that you could argue. I'm not saying that that's not out there, but that's not the clip you used. No one is saying that uh, there's no white person in there. No, <laughs> no one can no one could possibly take the argument away that you should what feel bad for being white and be abused for being white. I mean there are there are so many things you could pull to show people making that argument. That clip was not one of them. I mean it's just blatant lying about what the clip's intentions were. Let's watch more. That's the message and it starts very young. Got that? Sesame Street is now indoctrinating children. The thing is, there are so many valid criticisms you could make about this. I am not, for even a second, making the argument that you have to be okay with this. But the clips you're using and your commentary on it don't match up. So, what? Ugh. You know what? I think there's someone a little better than me who could explain this to you, Tucker. Let's 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 bring him in. Hey, sport. Oh, that'll stretch your groin. Oh, hey, sport. You know you know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna. Hey, sport. Your mom tells me that uh, you were a little upset at your television earlier because um, well. You thought Elmo was calling you racist. Now, look, Sport, I understand that you were a little upset, but, you know, if, you, if you're having a hard time understanding the show that teaches people to count to five, well, I don't know, Sport, maybe this whole newsman thing isn't for you, you know? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They go to twelve? Son of a bitch never stood a chance. Also, dude, you're mad at Elmo. The last person that I've ever seen be mad at Elmo was my sister when he didn't show up to her birthday party. Mind you, she was 15 at the time, so maybe not the best example, but you get my point. I mean, look at the world in the past century. Right now, you have Muslims in concentration camps in China. You have people still alive who were placed in internment camps in America based on their race. And we are yet to see how history is going to look back on us separating immigrant children from their families at the border. I mean, the fact that some rich white man wants to try to say that Discussing racism implies that you think this country is bad or it's the fault of a specific, specifically a three-year-old Bobby. I mean, it's just, it's completely ridiculous. Also, I don't want to fucking talk about racism with my kids, man. Come on. Like, seriously, jokes aside, look at me for a second. It took me 20 minutes to set up my one light because of how fucking white I am. Like, I am white white. I was a gold member at Starbucks without realizing it for six months. If I talk to my child about racism, it's, it's, I don't know how to even start to approach that conversation. I don't even know how to start to introduce it to them. So if Sesame Street wants to do it for me, thank you. I don't want to do it. Like, it's important. I think you have to do it. But if I could choose between me and then Sesame Street and I kind of answer the questions, let's have Elmo take it. Let, let's have Elmo take it. I want to be one of those really bad parents who just puts their kid in front of the TV, plays Sesame Street, and expects them to know how to count to 12. And hey, if they learn about racism along the way, all the better for me. And the, thi the thing is, I think a lot of people, them included, might argue that they're not news like, they're not news anchors, they're news show hosts, and so maybe they're not supposed to be held to the same standard as, like, the 7 o'clock news, but I take a serious issue with that. I mean, you're still disguising as a news show. When you choose to sit at a desk and talk about what's happening in the world, and you don't have an audience laughing in the background, you're trying to give yourself a specific narrative. You're trying to give yourself a specific level of authority. Now, look at me. I'm some dumbass in his 20s in front of his TV that shows ads every two minutes that he has to skip 
with fucking Pop Funkos as his background when he talks about news. What's up with that? I have no authority, and that's amazing, because every single thing I say in this video, you have the complete ability to disagree with and to point flaws in my arguments, and that's fantastic. Because this is such a small YouTube channel, anything that I say that isn't accurate, you can point out in the comments, and there's an actual direct discussion about this. But if I was 10 years older and had a little more experience and was in the same exact setup making the same exact arguments on live television, who is going to disagree with me? Who is going to, to point out what I'm saying? It's just sad that we're at a point where the quantity of viewers is more important than the quality of information. I mean, seriously, if I saw three videos on YouTube, John Oliver discusses universal basic income, Tucker Carlson discusses universal basic income, and Rachel Maddow discusses universal basic income, I would honestly go with the John Oliver video because there is a level of humor and entertainment that I know is going to be there, but I feel like John Oliver has given himself more integrity and a better reputation than some people who are actually supposed to be news people. I mean, for fuck's sake, I would just Philip DeFranco with it more. I mean, say what you want about Philip DeFranco, but when he gives his opinion on something, he says, hey, this is my opinion. He doesn't say shit like this as fact. And you know, the thing that kind of got me to want to make this video was a post I saw on Reddit a little over a year ago. I couldn't find the original post while I was doing my research, unfortunately, but I found like a news screenshot that was close enough. It's not normal that two news stations can have opposite headlines of the same issue and present it as fact. And you really don't know, you, you really don't know what to believe. I mean, it's, it's insane. I don't know. I think the point that I'm making is you can watch whatever source of news you want to watch. I'm not trying to say don't watch Fox or don't watch MSNBC. I'm just saying it's worth thinking about why you consume that content. Are you consuming it because it's what you think the best information is, or is it just what tends to agree with you the most? Maybe you can try tuning into a different program on occasion. I mean, even if you disagree with everything they say, if you can verbalize your argument and talk about why their points aren't what you think are true, you'll be better at arguing your views, and you'll expose yourself to more viewpoints than you'll get from one news channel. I mean, when the reporting, and not not those like really dumb talking head debates, that's just like, you know, this no, is but like you don't understand, understand what it is I'm trying, trying to say. say. Yeah, that shit's garbage. But when the actual reporting questions your views, why do they question it? What's your argument against what they're saying? How can you verbalize your position in a way that disproves theirs? Overall, the takeaway here isn't me telling you what you should and shouldn't watch. It's just saying that you should ask why you're watching it. I think a really cool resource that you can check out is the this interactive media bias chart I found. It's a cool chart that talks about how accurate they think the reporting from multiple sources are and if they lean left, right, or center. Now, obviously, it's not going to be a perfect anything. Everyone has their biases. Nothing is absolute fact. But I think it's a really cool place to start just to think about the media you're consuming. I mean, when I personally consume news, I consume NPR and I do recommend checking it out. They have some cool stuff on Spotify. They have a podcast that updates every hour with the latest updates. Check this out for a second. Live from NPR News, I'm Barbara Klein. The White House physician says President Trump's condition... I didn't mean to cut that off while I was talking about Trump, but by now whatever she said is old news, but... Look at how boring that clip was. Isn't that nice? I also personally enjoy the NPR Politics podcast. They upload every weekday. I do think they overall try to stick to the facts. They tend to have various specialists of multiple backgrounds on to discuss the current events. I think it's worth a check out. Even if you watch it and you hate it, it'll be different than what you're watching now. And it might, it might make you question things. It might make you question your own news sources. And it's homework you can do the next time you're driving to work. It's really easy. That's all I have. Thank you guys so much for watching if you're still here. I really appreciate it. All of my sources are going to be down below. Please check it out if you're actually interested in this. You can check for yourself if I'm taking anything out of context. I did my absolute best not to. I think I did a pretty good job of that. But let me know below if there's anything you thought that was a little unfair. Uh, and also feel free to let me know in the comments if I was either brilliant or an idiot. I expect the latter, but hey, you never know. Uh, feel free to like, whatever. Does anyone really want to hear me say that? Smash that like button. I don't have, like, a thing. If I should, like, bro fist or... I think a somber fade to black would be really unique. Did that feel unique? Was that good?
Did that, did that, did that interest you? What about like, what about like a barn door effect? Was that good? Page peel? No? Is this bit going on too long? Yeah? Agreed. Bye. Pretty, that was pretty good compared to what I expected. That went well.